The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. At 50, I'm not a bit of a little 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 Yes, at market after market, independent tobacco experts can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Remember, LSMFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, and fine tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. <laughs> The Lucky Strike Program, starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, over these many years that I've been introducing our scintillating star, my one regret has been that I'm not a poet, for if I were... I would paint a word picture with colorful phrases. What a beautiful thought, Don. I can just imagine you a poet. Henry Wadsworth Fatfellow. (laughs) Continue, Don. However, you don't have to be a Shelley or a Keats to... Hmm. I'll get it, Don. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. Rochester, you certainly picked a fine time to call. Why aren't you listening to the program? That's why I called, boss. There's something wrong with the radio. Oh, well, maybe there's a break in the electric cord. You know, the one that runs from the radio to where we've got it plugged in. I thought of that, boss, so I traced it. I started at the radio, went around the baseboard, up to the windowsill, out the window, across the driveway, through the hedge, and right to the plug on Mr. Coleman's back porch. <laughs> Say, Rochester, I hope nobody saw you. Well, just as I reached the porch, Mrs. Coleman came out, so I ducked behind the hedge and meowed like a cat. Did you fool her? I think so. She left two saucers of milk. (laughs) Two? Yeah, one had a note on it. This one's for Mr. Benny. (laughs) Good, I'll have it when I get home. Anyway, Rochester... If the cord is plugged in right, maybe there's something wrong with the radio itself. Did you check the tubes? Mm Mm-hmm. The condenser? Mm Mm-hmm. The transformer? Mm Mm-hmm. The dials? Boss, I even put murine in the magic eye. (laughs) Oh. I don't know what to do. I hate to miss your program. Well, I've got an idea, Rochester. I'll leave the receiver off the hook, and you'll be able to hear the whole show over the telephone. Yes, sir. Okay, Don, let's get on with the program. Ladies and gentlemen, as I was saying, even though I'm not a poet, today I'd like to introduce our star with a little poem. A poem? Yes. To Jack Benny, I love my boss, but he's so cheap, he only spends a slow buck. Slow buck? His suits are from Montgomery Ward, his hair from Sears and Roebuck. (laughs) What? And here he is, Jack Benny. again, this is Jack Benny talking. Hmm, hair from Sears and Roebuck. (laughs) Don, I can write poetry, too. As a matter of fact, I have one about you. Oh, about me? Yes. Reynolds flew around the world in a plane that was made to order. But if he tried to fly around you, he wouldn't get south of the border. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Jackson, your name may not be John Greenleaf, but you're much wittier. Yes, sir. Oh, Jack, how can you compare flying around the world with me? I'm not so fat. You're not, eh? Don, there's a three-hour difference in time between your belt buckle and back pocket. (laughs) Next week, it'll be four hours. Hey, Jackson, if you really want to... Wait a minute, Phil, wait a minute. I want to see what Rochester thought of that joke. Hello? 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 Rochester, hello? 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 Rochester, I just told a joke. Where were you? I had to answer the door. The man from the cleaners was here. Oh, what did he want? He found a 50-cent piece on the floor, and he wondered if it came out of your suit. I told him it wasn't yours. 
Rochester, what makes you so sure it didn't fall out of my suit? Oh, boss, come now! <laughs> what? Before you send a suit to the cleaners, you loosen the lining, finger the cuffs, turn all the pockets inside out, and then run the lid through the sieve three times. <laughs> oh, stop making things up. And if you want to hear the program, you better stay at the phone. Yes, sir. And by the way, the mailman was here and just left a package. A package? Uh, from Sears and Roebuck. You can be a blonde again. <laughs> good, good. That's the one that makes me look like Nelson Eddy. Now I've got to get on with the show, so don't hang up. Now, Phil, what were you talking about? Well, I was just going to say, Jackson, if you want to get some class on the program, how about doing something different, something entertaining, like, well, well, like letting Livy and me sing a song together? Hey, that sounds like a pretty good idea. You'll sing with Phil, won't you, Mary? No, thanks. I sang with Phil before. What about it? I didn't mind him singing about turnip greens, but he kept time by hitting me on the head with a ham hock. <laughs> oh. All right, Livy, all right. So if that's the way you want to feel about it, don't sing with me. I just thought it would be nice to have a trio. Trio? You and Mary would make a nice trio? Yeah. Look, Phil, let me explain something to you. One is a solo, two is a duet. Now, if you add a third person, you've got a trio. Oh. And if you add a fourth person, you have a quartet. Uh-huh. Now, Phil, if you had four people and you found a fifth, what would you have? Throw me that lead again, will you, <laughs> All right. If you had four people and you found a fifth, what would you have? A quintet. I fooled you that time, didn't I, Jack? <laughs> Why, Phil, that's right. If you had a fifth, you'd have a quintet. Yeah, but they'd all be loaded. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Mary, I don't blame you for not wanting to sing with them. Phil knows absolutely nothing about music. I do, too. Phil, what you know about music, you could write on an ice cube with a branding iron. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> What are you laughing at, Mary? Did you see the way the arranger has to write the music so Phil can read it? No, how? An eighth note is a diamond, a quarter note is a heart, a half note a club, and a whole note a spade. <laughs> Phil, you have your music written out in diamonds, hearts, clubs, and spades? Certainly. How do you read it? Well, it's simple. Look, here, I'll show you. Now, look at this sheet of music, see? Well, that makes no sense at all to me. Sure it does, Jackson. Take this bar, for instance. Now, you see those notes right here, one right after the other? Oh, you mean the scale? Scale, what's that? <laughs> what's that? Phil, what do you call this? That's a flush. <laughs> a flush. Well, look, Phil, what about this next bar? It has two notes, then a space, and then two more notes. That's an inside straight. <laughs> an inside straight? You mean you draw to it? If you play a violin, if you play a trumpet, you blow to it. <laughs> Mary, stop helping us. Phil, if you want to play your music by cards, that's all right with me. But what's this king doing here? That's Petrillo. <laughs> I should have known. All right, all right, we've had enough of that. It's time for a song. Dennis, Dennis. <sighs> Dennis, what are you yawning about? I didn't get any sleep last night. My mother and father had a big argument. An argument? Yeah, it was all about you. My mother said you were a jerk. <laughs> hmm. Then my father got up and said you were a great guy and a fine example of a man. You're... Father said that? May he rest in peace. <laughs> now stop being silly. Your father's sitting right out here in the audience. Yeah, doesn't he look awful? Well, cut that out. Dennis, why does your mother dislike Jack so much? Well, she used to go with Mr. Benny before she met my father. She did not. She says she did. What was your mother's name before she married your father? I didn't know her then. <laughs> Of course you didn't. <laughs> now, come on, kid. Let's have your song. Okay. And face the telephone so Rochester can hear it, will you?
and spy. A kiss became a sigh. Your lovely eyes seem to sparkle just like wine does. No heart ever yearned the way that mine does for you. A moose needs a hat rack. I can't understand why that didn't get a laugh. Norman Krasner liked it. And that was Dennis Day singing his latest Victor recording. Man, you can get killed around here. You know? <laughs> that was Dennis Day singing his latest Victor recording, Mamzelle. And now, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> everything falls down on us, no rehearsals, anything happens here, you know? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight, we're going to present our version of the Universal International Picture based on Betty McDonald's bestseller, The Egg and I. In our interpretation... Jack, you can't do The Egg and I. Fred Allen did it last week. I heard it, Don. But this won't conflict with the way Allen did it. You see, we're going to do a comedy version. <laughs> anyway, folks, in our play tonight... I will be Fred McMurray, and Mary Livingston will be Claudette Colbert. What part am I going to play, Jack? Well, Don, the scene takes place on a farm, so you can play the part of our pig. <laughs> oh, Jack, every time you do a farm sketch, I play the part of a pig. I want to do something else. Well, what would you like to be, Don? A canary. <laughs> Don, you a canary? Beep, 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 beep. Well, that's not so bad. All right, Don, you can be the canary, but in order for people to believe it, do you happen to have a yellow suit? Yellow suit? No, no, I haven't. Oh. Well, why don't you step out in the street and put on a taxi cab? <laughs> and now for... Oh, wait a minute. Before we start, I want to go to the telephone and see if Rochester is enjoying the show. Hello? Hello? <laughs> How do you like that? Rochester! Put on the coffee, honey! <laughs> Rochester, we're going to do a play, and I want you to hear it. Okay, you're the boss. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the egg and I. As the scene opens, we find the newlyweds, Claudette and Fred, driving out to their new home. <laughs> Gee... <clears throat> Gee, Claudette, I hope you like the new farmhouse I bought. Oh, I know I will, Mr. McMurray. 
Oh, you can call me Fred. We've been married a week now. <laughs> Remember after the preacher said, I pronounce you man and wife, we turned to each other and shook hands? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and gee. <laughs> gee, you were nervous. I was not nervous. You were, too. You put the ring on the preacher's finger and gave me $10. <laughs> Ten dollars. Gee, I was nervous. Anyway, it <laughs> sure was a wonderful wedding. All our friends were there, the music played softly, and we made a lovely looking couple as we marched down the aisle. Yes, but don't you think it would look nicer if I had carried the flowers? <laughs> they were bluebells. They went so well with my eyes. <laughs> but darling, wasn't it exciting as we drove away from the church with those shoes tied in back of the car? Yeah. I wonder what made them bounce like that. My mother was still in them. <laughs> oh, yes. I cut her loose when we went through Anaheim. <laughs> they can always use another smudge pot there. <laughs> well, here we are. <clears throat> Look, darling, there's our new home. Gee, it sure looks run down. Yeah, but we'll fix it up. There's the man from the real estate office. Oh, mister. Mister? Yes? <laughs> I, I just bought this house. Uh, you're the man from the real estate office, aren't you? Yes, Nelson's the name. I'm here to show you around. Gee, what a peculiar style of architecture this house has. It's not French Normandy. Is it early American? No, crummy colonial. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go inside. Come on, honey. All right. I'm talking to my wife. <laughs> oh, now follow me. Here's the front door. Hmm. A few quarts of oil will fix that. Uh, come on, Fred, let's go in. Uh, just follow me, folks. I'll show you through the house. This is the living room. This is the dining room. And this is the bedroom. Gee. Uh, Mr. Nelson, does the bathroom have a tile floor? Shall we go out and see? <laughs> oh. I'd like to see the kitchen. Uh, right through this door. There, isn't it a beauty? Well, I don't know. The stove looks very old and awfully dirty. Oh, that's just a little dust. I'll blow it off. Mister, have you tried Sen Sen? <laughs> Never mind that. Gee, this, this place does look run down. Yes, but with a little work, you can make it look like a million dollars. Whoops. <laughs> well, it's getting kind of late. I better go. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Nelson. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Nelson. Mr. Nelson! Oh, you, nobody wants me to have any fun. Goodbye. Well, darling, here we are in our own little home. Well, we better start getting to sleep. On a farm, you have to get up at four in the morning. You're right, sweetheart. Good night. Good night. Good night. Get out of here! <laughs> Darling. <laughs> Darling. <laughs> Darling, you're snoring. <laughs> no, no, that's the rooster. It's morning. Oh, oh. Well, you hurry and get breakfast ready. I'll go out and milk the cows. It's a good thing I slept in my clothes.
My, it's pitch dark this early in the morning. Now, where's that milking pail? Ah, here it is. Easy, bossy, easy. That's a good girl, bossy. Easy, bossy, easy. Gee, I can't seem to find... Uh-oh, wrong end. <laughs> Easy, bossy, easy. <laughs> oh, wrong animal. Now, where... <laughs> now, where... Where's... Where's that cow? Ah, there you are, bossy. Now hold still while I fix the pail and stool. There. That's a good girl. Oh, la, 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 la. <laughs> La, la, la. Hmm, better change. Oh, Fred, are you through milking? I'm not, but I think the cow is. <laughs> hey, hey, what are you holding? Look, I just found it. It's a black kitten with a white stripe down its back. Well, shucks. If that isn't the cutest little... Kitty, have you tried Sen Sen? <laughs> Now, Claudette, don't stand around. We've got to feed the animals. Okay. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, look, Fred, isn't it cute the way our canary follows us around? <laughs> yeah. Now, shoo, canary, shoo, shoo. We've got to feed the chickens. Here, chick, 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 chick. Come on, chick, 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 chick. Here's some corn for you. Oh, Fred, look at that hen sitting on the nest. Where? Oh, yes. We've got breakfast. Well, I better get some uh, oats for the horse, hay for the cow, and. Uh... Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> uh... Uh... <laughs> what? what? What happened? Our canary stepped on the pig and killed it. <laughs> That's too bad. <laughs> what a canary. I should have gotten suspicious when he bent the bars in his cage. Uh, Claudette. Uh, Claudette, maybe the canary is hungry. He can't be. A little while ago, I gave him a side of beef. Well, give him the other side. Now, let's get on with the... Oh, look, here comes someone. Hello. Howdy, neighbors. Howdy. Zeke Harris is my name. Live right over the hill from you. Well, do you have a farm over there? Yep, I raise a little of this, a little of that, mostly corn. For your pigs? No, nope, for my still. <laughs> oh, you, you have a still? Yes, sir, she'll make 20 gallons a day. 20 gallons a day, that isn't much. Ain't bad, my old lady don't drink. <laughs> <laughs> we just moved in here, Zeke. How long have you been living around this section? Well, now, let me see here. I moved here in 1918. That's 1947. That's uh, 15 years. <laughs> Wait a minute, Zeke. From 1918 to now, it's 29 years you've lived here. Well, we don't count the 14 years of prohibition as left. <laughs> oh. oh, got any children? Yeah, I've got two sons, but we ain't seen them since they run away with the circus. That was 10 years ago. Sure, Mr. the boy. <laughs> Shame 
mean both of them left. Maybe one of them will come back. Ain't likely. They're Siamese twins. <laughs> oh, Siamese twins, eh? Yep, they're pretty attached to each other. <laughs> oh, Zeke, if you just had a partner, you'd be another one of them Lum and Abners. By the way, Zeke, is that field over there part of your farm? Yep, that's the place where I raised the tobacco. That's my hired hands out there picking it. Where? Right over there. Reuben, Reuben, we've been thinking what a sad world this would be If we had no Betty Crable and no LSMFT Reuben, Reuben, we've been working, raising those tobacco sprigs To make a pack of lucky strike for Effie Boone and Speedy Riggs well, once they went down to the city just to see a burly cue, they came back and brought a sample round and firm with eyes of blue. Reuben, Reuben, we're not joking, makes no difference where we roam. We will always keep on smoking luckies till the cows come home. Zeke, your farm hands are pretty good. Yes, sir, they sing all the time. Hiya, neighbors. Howdy, Zeke. Good to see you all. Well, hello. Uh, uh, Ma Kettle is the name. Live right down the road. Which house? No house, just down the road. <laughs> no house? Yep, she's married to Paul Kettle, the laziest man in the state. He's the laziest man in the world. One day, he sat on an acorn. Twenty years later, we had to shake him out of the tree. No, Kettle. Well, what do you know? Here comes Paul Kettle, the lazy critter now. Name is Dennis, but folks call him Paul. Howdy, Paul. Hi, Zeke. Hi, folks. Ma, put your arms around me and squeeze me. I feel like exhaling. <laughs> <laughs> there, that feels better. Any place to lie down around here? Oh, Paul, stand up for a while. Oh, uh, by the way, what are you folks figuring on raising here? Chickens. <laughs> Oh, wouldn't try it if I were you. Tried to raise some myself a few years ago. Never had any luck. What happened? Bought ten hens and laid a lot of eggs, but none of them never did hatch. Well, how many roosters did you have? Oh, roosters. <laughs> hmm. Well, I guess I better be going along now. Got to go home and help my pig write a letter. Your pig writes a letter? <laughs> Yeah, I just tell him how to spell, and he already has the pen and oink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pa Kettle, you may be a hick, but... Why don't you finish? Too lazy. <laughs> well, look, my wife and I are just going in to have breakfast. Why don't you folks come in and join us? That's okay with me. Me too. Pick me up, Ma. Well, come on, let's all go in and... Hey, wait a minute. What happened to Zeke? Where's Zeke Harris? Oh, he had to run along. He's got his own show. <laughs> What? I can stay till Wednesday. <laughs> As you listen to the chant of the tobacco auctioneer, remember, LSMFT. <laughs> Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. Mr. Porter G. Wall, Sr. of Pilot Mountain, North Carolina, has been an independent tobacco buyer for 29 years, and he said... I've seen plenty of good, fine tobacco bought by the makers of Lucky Strike at auction after auction. Tobacco that's really fine. For 14 years now, I've smoked Lucky's myself. Quote, I've seen plenty of good, fine tobacco bought by the makers of Lucky Strike. Unquote. Remember... Independent tobacco experts like Mr. Wall can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs>